Close your eyes and watch your breath. When the breath goes in, just stay with the sensation of the breath coming in. When it goes out, stay with the sensation of the breath going out. And notice if the breath feels comfortable. You can experiment with different kinds of breathing. You can try long breathing for a while and see if that feels good. If long breathing doesn't feel good, you can try shorter breathing. You can try deep, shallow, heavy, light, fast, slow. Try to see what kind of breathing is good for the body right now so the mind can settle down and have a sense of well-being right here. Without that sense of well-being, the mind gets hungry and it goes looking for scraps of food here and there and ends up eating a lot of stuff that's not good for it. Gulping down pleasures, sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations. And, and sometimes in the process of gulping things down, you know, just to get the pleasure, you're doing things that are unskillful. And then when you're done, what have you got? The pleasure itself is gone. All you've got is the memory, and the memory is not necessarily a good one. You want to look for a happiness that doesn't leave a bitter aftertaste. There are basically three ways of doing that. One is through being generous, another is through being virtuous, i.e. abstaining from harming yourself or harming other people. And the third is through meditation. These kinds of pleasures are actually good for the mind. The Buddha didn't say that we should run away from pleasure. There was that period in his lifetime where he decided that all pleasure was bad, and so he just inflicted himself with all kinds of pain. He realized that finally was not the path. He realized that some pleasures are actually good for the mind. They're good for you, they're good for the people around you. The pleasure that comes from being generous and the heart feels very expansive and you feel like you're contributing something to the world. At the same time, developing a breadth of heart that's really nice to live in. You think about your, ha your mind as a house. Okay, If you're stingy and unwilling to share, it's like living in a very small house where you don't have enough room to turn around. Whereas if you're generous, it's like living in a very large house. Everywhere you go is your home. Everyone you give to becomes your friend. The same with virtue. You don't harm yourself, you don't harm others. You're giving universal safety, at least from your quarter, to the whole world. And then you have a share in that safety as well. The Buddha said this, is, too, is a great gift. And finally, there's meditation, getting the mind to settle down and find a sense of well-being inside. As you go through the deeper levels of meditation, you find it gets more and more refined, more and more satisfying. And the mind gets sharper and sharper, so you can begin to see even the slightest little things that you're doing that are causing unnecessary suffering. So it's in this way that you find a happiness that doesn't leave a bitter aftertaste. It's, it tastes good when you think about it, it tastes good when you're actually eat, taking it in, and it tastes good when you reflect on it. That's the kind of happiness that the world needs a lot more of, just as you need a lot more of it, too. So try to provide this happiness. It's a gift to yourself, it's a gift to others. That gives the mind a really solid nourishment so that whatever comes up in life that's going to be difficult, you have the strength to withstand it.